But let's dig a bit deeper on today's political bombshell, Scott Morrison's secret moves to anoint himself as the Minister for three additional portfolios. Now, it may make some sense that during a pandemic, the PM needs to be, I don't know, some kind of backup health minister or even finance minister, but then it's hard to fathom then to take the resources portfolio as well when the government had a perfectly sound, perfectly professional operator in Queensland Nationals MP Keith Pitt already in the job. We've got the former Joint Resources Minister with us now, Keith Pitt. Welcome. It's great to be with you, Chris. You're very generous with your comments. Yeah, you'll have to go back and change those business cards to say Joint Resources Minister now. Oh, well, that's, that's not really the case. But I, I stand by every decision I've ever made. Uh, they're in accordance with the rules, in accordance with the Cabinet Handbook and everything else. Uh, and I'm with them 100%. All right, how many times in history have you heard of Prime Ministers sought to be appointed a joint minister of multiple portfolios? Have you ever heard about this before? Oh, well, no, no, I haven't. Uh, but if it was something that couldn't be done, my department would have advised me, I'm sure. Uh, and, you know, it was some particular circumstances. I mean, the reasons for it as a matter for the Prime Minister. I, I can't talk about his state of mind or why he's made particular decisions uh, that he has, but... I'm very proud of the sector I represented in terms of the resources sector. They, they were just magnificent throughout the pandemic and continue to be so. Didn't he like you or didn't he like the side you were on with certain decisions that you had to make? Oh, well, there is a particular matter which is currently before the courts and, and I can't make any comments around that for obvious reasons, as you'd know. But, but you were at my, my feelings or whether right? I'm happy... Well, as I've said, I can't, I can't comment. It, it's currently before the courts for appeal. I mean, what, what I can say is that whether I'm happy or unhappy or my feelings or otherwise have absolutely no bearing uh, on the decision-making process. But, but you were publicly stated to be at loggerheads with him, were you not, over that offshore gas project? Oh, well, there's all sorts of things which are reported in the media. Uh, and, mate, I know you want me to buy into these things, but I, I simply can't. Uh, I mean, I held the portfolio. Uh, there's a decision that's currently before the courts on appeal, uh, and you know, I just can't make public comment. I like okay. it, Chris, but I'm not looking for a visit to the big house, mate. When, <laughs> when, when did he tell you he had become a joint resources minister? When did you find out? Oh, look, I know sections of the media are worked up about the fact I can't identify a particular date, but without access to diary, and there's hundreds and hundreds of meetings in a year. It was around the middle of the year, the early to middle part. OK, so and, uh, very, very, very much after he'd already done it. Oh, mate, I can't be sure of that. I don't know when it was done. I'm, I'm, I've seen reports in the Oz and elsewhere, April. but... I've got, no well, I've got no specific knowledge uh, of that or otherwise. When you found uh, out that he'd done that... I was focused on my job, mate. Keith, when he found out that he'd done that, did you challenge him over it? Oh, well, we've, we've had a number of discussions on a number of matters. You know, I won't get into the details of was that, but heated? we're both very forthright. But, mate, I've never had heated words uh, with the former Prime Minister. I, I just haven't. I mean, we, we always put our positions professionally based on facts. There are times where we, we agree, there are times where we disagree, as you'd expect. Uh, but as all good Cabinet Ministers should, you put forward your views, uh, you're, you're frank and forthright because that's your job. But you must have felt like a mushroom, very much kept in the dark on this, and you would have been angry, wouldn't you? Uh, mate, as I said, it doesn't matter what my feelings were. It's about making sure we act in the national interest, that we meet the criteria that's set for decisions as a Cabinet Minister... Uh, and that's what I've done. But, Keith, what's in the national interest for the Prime Minister to be Joint Health Minister, Joint Finance Minister and Joint Energy and Resources Minister? What's in the national interest? Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a question for the former PM. Uh, in terms of the decision-making process, uh, there's a very strict structure which can be appealed. Uh, that's currently happening on a number of matters, not, not just in my former portfolio, but others, as people are entitled to do. Uh, I've always been very cautious to be diligent, uh, discharge my obligations, uh, and I stand by those decisions. If he wasn't Joint Resources Minister, could he have done what he did in December and can that offshore gas project? Well, in terms of making decisions in particular portfolios, you, you have to be sworn into them. I mean, that's just a statement of fact. Right. Your colleagues David Littleproud and Barnaby Joyce have both expressed opposition to what Scott Morrison did. Is it the behaviour of a control freak, Keith? Uh, well, people are entitled to their views and to make their own comments. But, but as I said, I, I get on very well with Scott Morrison. I still do. 
Uh, we, we brought the country through as part of the Cabinet through a very tough period of time uh, that was really tough on the Australian people, it was really tough on business, it was incredibly difficult for families. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the work of the former government uh, that I was a part of. OK, but he has no defence as to why he kept you in the dark. Why wouldn't he tell people about this, especially ministers he was about to usurp? There is no excuse for keeping it secret, is there? Oh, there's a number of ways to, to make decisions uh, within the Cabinet process, including a full decision by Cabinet on particular matters. Uh, it's up to the PM as to how that might move forward. But, mate, you know, I, I know people want me to say particular things uh, until this court case is dealt with. Well, uh, clearly I can't make comments around how that decision in particular was made or might not have been made or could have been made in a different way. All right, one last one on another issue. The former Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, has done a backflip with Triple Pike today, supporting a voice to Parliament, despite saying this in 2017. It would be, in effect, a third chamber. Now, as to its prospects at a referendum, uh, let me tell you, uh, I honestly, uh, as someone who's had some experience in how easy it is to change the Australian Constitution, it would have no prospect of success whatsoever. He's a piece of work, Keith, isn't he? I also said previously supported coal-fired power stations. <laughs> <laughs> and in his book he said I was at a meeting I wasn't actually at. Uh, and, mate, look, on The Voice, uh, I won't be supporting the proposal. Uh, I just think it's, it's wrong. Uh, we are one country under one flag uh, and I just don't think it's the right way forward. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Keith. Appreciate it. Great. Great to be with you.